Hey everyone, it's Bobby from Decoding here and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to integrate React with Django. So React front end with a Django back end. But before I do, if this is the first time you have been to Decoding, then please subscribe and click that bell so you are notified every time I add a video to the channel. And also, if you want to um, support this channel, then there's a link to my Patreon page and my HBAR wallet in the description below. So over the last few weeks, months, I've had a, quite a few comments from you guys asking for a tutorial focusing on React front end, Django back end. So I've been working with Django now for a few years and I specialize in working with startups, you know, taking an idea and building a, a phase one or an MVP for these startups. And what I normally do is I focus on a, a web app built entirely on Django. That way I can get it built very, very quickly. And at the end, I've got a definitive list of all of the URLs that are needed to you know, get that MVP up and running. And then at a later date, we'll implement a front end. So in this video, what I'm going to actually do is build a web app in Django only and this web app is going to be a YouTube scheduler so like a to-do list really and then what I'll do I will show you how to then implement react into that project and um, at the end of it we'll have a front end being served by react and a back end served by Django so essentially Django would just be there to serve up the API using the uh, Django REST framework and React will be doing all of the heavy lifting. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build a Django project because a lot of tutorials online will focus on you know, React right from the start. So a lot of you guys might have a Django project and you wanna implement React afterwards, and that's what I'm focusing on. So let's build the app, then we'll add React and we'll have a look at them side by side. They should be damn near identical. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. If you look at the screen, um, there's a syllabus. Uh, what we'll do, we'll focus initially on the back end. So entirely Django. So it'll be Django doing the back end and front end. So Django project. Then what we'll do, we'll split that down and we'll build the back end. Then we'll build the front end in React and then we will test that app. So there's only a few things we can go through. Let's jump straight into it. Right, so there will be some prerequisites to this Django React tutorial. For instance, you will need Python installed on your machine. I am using the recent version 3.9.6 and it can be found here at python.org forward slash downloads. We will also be using the Node Package Manager, so NPM. Uh, so you will need to download Node.js on your machine and that can be found at nodejs.org. You will need the latest version or the link CDN for jQuery. Uh, when we're doing section one, so we'll be using Ajax. So find that here at code.jquery.com. And lastly, you will need the most recent versions of CSS and JavaScript from Bootstrap. So visit getbootstrap.com to get those and add those to the uh, HTML documents as we go through the tutorial. So they are the prerequisites, Python, Node.js, jQuery, and Bootstrap. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Hey everyone and welcome to the first part of the Django React tutorial. In this section we'll be building a YouTube scheduling app using just Django. Right, so we'll be doing the back end and the front end. So at the end of this section we'll have a working app that will allow us to create, read, update and delete tasks to our schedule. In the next section we will then be breaking it down and uh, using Django for the back end and the API. And then in the next section after that, we'll be using React to handle the front end. So we'll have a single page app at the end of this tutorial. In this section, however, we'll be building models. We're we'll using Django REST framework to um, serialize the model and create an API. And we'll be using Django templates to render the information. So this is the app on the screen here. We've got an add task, complete tab, incomplete. This is all bootstrap, right? So you need to go to bootstrap.com. Uh, that's kind of above and beyond this tutorial. But if you go there, you can get the CSS, you can get the JavaScript um, script tags. And you will also need the most recent version of jQuery to do this as well. But this is why it looks the way it does. I've used bootstrap, okay? So if you add task, it'll open a model. Again, it's a bootstrap model, nothing fancy. Let's create a task, create a Django React tutorial. Um, and we won't click complete, but we'll click save. 
that should now be an incomplete. So that's create. Reading is, we're reading it here, right? Okay, so it's gonna be a table of all of the different tasks in incomplete. To update, we click edit. If you click completed and save, that should update that. No longer an incomplete, it's incomplete. And D of CRUD is delete. And if we click this, hey presto, it's all gone. So this is a Django app that you're looking at here. It is mimicking the React app that we're about to build, right? The uh, single page app that we're gonna build in React. Let's jump straight into it and actually build it. I have already tried recording this tutorial once whilst typing along. Um, it was an absolute pain. So I'm going to create this Django app. I'm going to move code across from my local machine and talk you through what I'm doing. So hopefully you can understand the processes. Okay, so if I open up a command prompt, it opens up on my other screen. Typical, let's just extend it so you can see what I'm doing. What we want to do is CD into your de development directory. Mine is called development. And we can then, I've used, uh, it's, a, it's a wrapper. So it's virtual ENV wrapper that I'm using for Windows that allows me to use a command make virtual ENV. And this will create uh, just a, a, a virtual environment that will house all of the libraries for this app. And we'll call this Django demo that will go about that will create the virtual environment and it will fire it up so this here would suggest that it's working so we now need to use a Python package um, called pip which allow us to install a library we, we need Django and we also need Django rest framework pause it whilst that's loading this may take a second or two Great, that's, um, that's worked. You can see here that it's installed a whole bunch of bits and pieces. So type in extensions, SQL pass, you've got Python time, time zone, all of these different packages. That's because we've used the command pip install Django and Django REST framework. And these are all of the libraries that are required to make those work. So now we've got Django, we can call Django admin start project. And we'll call this Django demo as well. Is that working? We will soon know. So if we CD into Django demo, perfect. So I'll bring over the directory that we just created so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. There we have it. So yeah, uh, Django demo. So this is when you, when you start a new project in Django, it comes with a manage.py file and a uh, project directory. So it will be called Django demo, which is what we named it. Within that, you've got settings, you've got in it, um, ASGI, you've got URLs, you've got whiskey as well. So this is straight out of the box. And um, what we'll do before we jump into the actual uh, coding, we'll just start an app. So let's go and we're already CD in the Django demo. So we can now call Python manage.py start app and we'll call this sh schd great and back in here now i'll tell you what i'll open up sublime so i used uh, as a code editor text editor i use sublime text and i'll open up django demo where is it django demo there we go there we have it. This is our new project, okay? So the first thing we need to do is go into settings.py and we need to add SCHD to the installed apps. And we also need to add REST framework. That's all we need to do in settings. We then need to play around with URLs. We need to use or create a router and register that router using um, the REST framework. So I'm gonna keep switching between this screen and my local, so that, like I say, I can just copy bits and pieces across. There we go. And I'll dump that here. So from REST framework, import routers, okay? And from SCHD, import views. 
will be right in that view shortly and the view will be called schedule view okay so router equals routers dot default router so this is what we're, we're bringing in from rest framework and then we register it and we use regular expression schedule views dot schedule view which we'll be creating in a second and we then add schd at the end here that's how we register it to routers um, because this path here api slash this is the router for slash schedule which will be um, that will be the api url that will be calling in the front end so it's important that we get that right we then have url patterns admin is already straight out of the box so we're adding this one here as the path for our schedule app namespace schedule and shed.urls which we haven't created yet but we will in a second or two and then the path api forward slash and then we include the router urls okay so you can create a few of these routers and register them and that's how we manage the api url in this app if we're going to ch uh, schd what we need to do first and foremost is we need to create a folder called templates and another one uh, new folder and this will be called chd within there we need a new file and this will be called index save as index.html so we'll do that first and then we'll add a new file save as and we'll call this urls.py and we also need another one called serializers so new file save as and we'll call this serializers serializers.py great they are all of the files that we're going to need we're not setting up static files we're just going to have the javascript and the css straight in this index file here okay normally i'd set up static files and media files for a project but we're not so i want this uh, django app to be as um manageable as possible without too much code right so what we'll do start off in models so these models each model will um essentially be a um a database table so every instance in that model will be a, a new row in that table okay so models what we'll do is we will pick this up and i will dump it in here uh, i did this earlier when i did a recording i had all sorts of typos i couldn't even spell charfield or max length so it's much easier for me to code it outside of the video and then dump it in but i assure you it's my coding so this is a youtube schedule model we've got a timestamp we're using the auto now add so this timestamp will be a field that gets created and it will remain as it will always remain the same and the updated field will be updated every time we edit or update the um, instance of the model we then have a title description completed. We have a char field. We have a text field for description and then completed as a Boolean true false, but it defaults to false. We then have done the string and we return self title. Nice and simple, very, very basic model. Okay. We then have, we want to serialize this and this is where we use in Django web um, rest framework. So I'll pick up this, I'll dump it in here. So from REST Framework, import serializers. From models, import YouTube schedule. That's what we just created. And we're creating a class here called YouTube Scheduler Serializer. We're calling serializers, which we're importing, and we're using model serializer. The meta class is model, YouTube schedule, fields, ID, title, description, completed. Very, very basic serializer. Not much going on there. But we now need to add that to our view this is all the back end the back end won't actually change much in this app and there's more than one way to skin a cat you can use uh, function based views class based views for this particular view we're using for the api we're using schedule view which is a view set but the actual index view we're going to handle that in the url itself normally i'd use a, a template view in this in the views but just for giggles i'll put it in the url so dot models import youtube sh schedule from rest framework using view sets from serializers importing the serializer we just created the view is schedule view. So we referenced that in, was it there? No, it wasn't. It was here. So this is schedule view. So this is what we're referencing in the router. Using view sets and model views, the serializer class is, is the YouTube serializer. And the query set is YouTube schedule objects all. So that is about as basic as you can get. 
So how do we render the index template? Well, we use a template view and we do that by adding or bringing in path from Django URLs, template view from generic. We name the app schedule and that's what we're referencing again in here. Shed schedule, okay. I'll just save that. Uh, where are we? Where were we? We were in here and then the URL pattern. So this is where we add template view. If you read the Django docs, it allows you to add it to a URL. It also allows you to use template view as a class, sorry, as a class based view that inherits templates view. So I just added it here for fewer lines of code. So as view template name, and we reference shared index index HTML, which is this one that we just created. Okay. Save. So that is it in terms of the back end. We've added views, URLs, we've got serializers, we've got models. What we now do is we will migrate or make migrations for the models and then we'll migrate. And when we call a migrate, it will migrate the app schedule and it'll also migrate all of the authentication and things like that. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So Python manage.py make migrations. And then we'll migrate. Perfect. And if I was to run server and go to localhost 8000, it would just come up with a blank screen. We haven't got anything in the HTML document, so we won't do that just yet. Let's open up Sublime Text again. But what we will do, we will open up index.html and we will dump in a whole bunch of code. Copy and paste. Right. So we're not using static files. So all of the CSS, all of the JavaScript is all contained. We don't need to load static. <laughs> that's a template tag from Django and that's a, that's a hangover. So when I was developing this app, I was using static files, but in the end I simplified it. So I could all have it all in one page, but in a, in a production environment, you would use static files. You'd have the CSS stored in static and that could be served up via a CDN using an S3 bucket or something like that. But we're not in this tutorial, right? So we've got a title tag. Did uh, well, I did code in app actually save. So we've got a link here. This is the bootstrap CSS. You can get this CSS from getbootstrap.com. It's above and beyond this tutorial, but you will need that CSS to make your app look like my app. Okay. Because all of these elements, HTML elements that you see here, HTML elements that you see here are all using bootstrap elements and classes and things like that to make them look the way they do. So you will need that CSS. You will also need the scripts which are here. So the JavaScript from getbootstrap.com. Note jQuery. The jQuery that comes with Bootstrap is a slightly older version. So it wouldn't allow me to make Ajax calls, for instance. So just get a more recent version of jQuery and it'll all fire up well. But these, the, the popper.min.js and the bootstrap.min.js, that comes straight from bootstrap or getbootstrap.com. So you will need to get that, the link to which will be in the description below. And also, the code for this project will be on GitHub. So the that will be in the description as well. So we've added an on load get data. So we are calling a JavaScript function when the body of this page loads. Okay, we'll go through that function in a second. We've got a main element here called container. So container class is bootstrap. All of these classes are bootstrap. H1 tag called scheduler app. We've then got a button. Um, and that is opening up a model. So when you add a task, it just opens up a model, which is again, this is all bootstrap stuff. I'll go through the model in a second. We're then using nav tags, tabs, sorry, and we've got a complete and incomplete. Note the um, hrefs here, complete, incomplete, and also note the IDs. So this is the complete tab. This is the incomplete tab. That's how we're, you, well, these are the uh, bootstrap um, IDs and data toggles that you need to open these which are the uh, tab contents. Uh, so as you click complete, it will open the unordered list. As you click incomplete, it will open the unordered list for incomplete. Notice the IDs, incomplete and complete. We reference those in a second in JavaScript, but these are completely blank, right? So you can use a, um, 
uh, you can use a, a template tag, a Django template tag, for instance, to populate these unordered lists. So, you know, you'd probably have um, li, um, an element li in there, and you'd have a for loop, so for s in schedule. Yeah, and you'd close that off underneath, and then you'd be, uh, was it n4? So that's what you do, you use a Django um, f uh, template tag to render the information from the back end, but we're not gonna do that in this tutorial. We're actually using Django Web Framework. So we're making a call using the API to get the data and render it. So that's why these U are, um, unordered lists are empty. But that is basically it. There's not much going on on this page, but we do have a model. So this is all bootstrap again. The model contains a form. So it's called schedule model. This is how we're opening. We're referencing the model with the ID. We've got a title. And then we've got a form. So if we just close the form there, the form's called schedule form. And then we've got a button here. So the button would normally sit within the form, but we're not here with, because it renders really weird. So it's called, uh, the ID is schedule submit. So we, we actually submit this form programmatically in JavaScript in a little while. But this button calls the form or submits the form using this here. So it's form equals schedule form, type submit. So that's how this form is working outside of that. So the form element, we've got a, a Django template tag called CSRF token that adds a hidden um, CRS, CSRF token to the form itself. We've got a hidden ID, a hidden action. So the action will be um, update or delete. And we've got a title description and completed. Note these uh, ID, um, IDs. So we've got completed, we've got um, scheduled description. We've got scheduled title and we reference those in Ajax. So as we get the response from uh, a JSON response from the API call, we then render each of those um, uh, keywords and the values for them keywords into this form programmatically, like I say. But that's the form, it's in a model. And that is it for HTML. So the HTML ends right there. So the body tag is here and we're calling get data. So that's the first function that we're calling. This is all the JavaScript. So everything down here is JavaScript. I'll start at the bottom just for um, giggles. At the very, very bottom here, this uh, JavaScript code, I won't go through it line by line. It's, it's, it's just necessary. This code will be on GitHub. This allows us to grab from the cookies the CSRF token to validate the form submission to make sure that it's a real person submitting the form. Okay, so that's, that's how we use the CSRF token here. So it's getting it from the cookie and it adds that with the Ajax call. So every time we make an Ajax call using J, uh, jQuery, we're applying that CSRF token. So um, ba -ba 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 -ba, we've got this here. So as the form, sorry, as the model gets hidden, it triggers reset, so it resets the form. Okay, so schedule form trigger reset. So that way um, it's always a blank model that is opened each time. So that's why I've got this code here. We then got the get data function. Get data is just an Ajax call. So we're calling the API schedule. So we go back to router. So API slash schedule. So we're calling that API and it's a get request. So we're getting every instance in the database. Get, we're making a get method call there. So we've got a success and we've got an error. So if there's an error, because we're in debug, it will actually print a, um, a, it, all of the uh, XRH status to the um, inspector panel. But if it's success, it just goes ahead and does what we need it to do. So we find the complete and incomplete. These are the unordered lists that I referenced a moment ago. We then empty them. So no matter what's in them, the first thing that get data does, it clears those unordered lists. We then do a for loop of the JSON response. So every instance of the database, we do a for loop. And we create a HTML string. Okay, that's what we're doing here. So again, this is li, this is what I was writing a moment ago when I was doing a for loop using the um, Django um, template tag, but we're using class. This is all bootstrap classes that we're using here. So justify content between that type of thing. Um, and we are using, let me open this up, that'll help. So we're creating this string, but we're inserting JSON. So I would be the, 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 the loop number. So the first loop would be zero. So this would be the first element of the JSON response. And we're looking for the keyword title. So in the second loop, that'll be JSON one, JSON two, so on and so forth. And we're adding the title into title equals and then into the text of the element. In here, this is important, right? So we're creating two buttons. One says edit, one says delete. On the edit button, we're creating a value with U for update dash ID. 
For delete, it's D-ID. That's important because as we click the button, we call on-click open model, it does something based on the action itself. So that's important, just remember that. So if JSON I complete, so if it's a completed task, we append this HTML. If it's incomplete, we append this HTML to the incomplete um, element here. So we empty the elements, we create HTML, we then append it to the right one. That's get data. Next, we've got open model. So remember that code U-ID? Well, we're getting that code and we're splitting it. The action becomes the first part of the string. The ID is the second part. So that's why we need that code. We then make an Ajax call to API schedule slash ID. So this is a get request. So this is how we're updating the uh, instance. And when we get the JSON response back for that particular instance, so ID one, two, three, whatever it might be, we get the ID and we add it to the form element for ID, the form element for action, title, description, and for completed, because that's a tick box, um, we get the prop checked and whether or not, it, and it's um, serialized. So if it's completed, it will be true. If it's not completed, it'll be false. And we just add that to prop. If action is D, what we do is we submit the form, okay? And that'll all make sense in a second because, you know, why would we submit if it's delete? But if we're, when we submit, I'll show you what that does in a second. And then if it's update, it just opens the model. So we've populated the form and we open the model so that we can update it. If there's an error, it just shows the console log. Great. That's the open model function that's called on button clicks. Lastly, we've got form controls. This is jQuery. So we're using um, form controls in jQuery to create the form variable and do something with it on a form submission, but we instantiate that form here. So we um, register the form in this init function on a return, and we instantiate the form controls on the document load. Okay, so when the, when the HTML form or page loads up, we instantiate this form, which is jQuery. So quickly, var manage schedule form function. Okay, so that is this function that we're creating here. Variable form, so this is the form in the model. On submit, so when the button is clicked, we wanna prevent the default behavior of that form. Default behavior is submitting the form to the back end. We don't wanna do that. We wanna do something funky on the front end. So it prevents default, so it stops the submission. We get the ID of the um, instance. Now, if this is, um, a new task, it won't have an ID. So that's why we've got this if else. So on the else, so this is, uh, we, we only get into else if there is no ID. So if there's no else, the URL is API schedule and the method is post. Okay, so we're posting information to the database. However, if there is an ID, then with the URL becomes API schedule slash ID with a trailing slash. And then we've got another if. So if schedule action is D, so if it's a delete action, the method becomes delete. If it's an update, the method becomes put. So these if statements here, essentially, it's programmatically creating a URL for Django REST framework, and it's creating a method depending on the type of submission. So that's what we're doing. So when you're doing just a Django backend and front end, there's quite a lot of work, it's quite a lot of code to make it work especially when you're um, Ajaxifying form submissions. If you were just using Django, solely Django with no Ajax, uh, every form submission would require a page reload, which is pff, old school. That's not what we wanna do, not on a modern website. So at the end of that, we then got an Ajax call. So this is the last part of this uh, section. The URL becomes the URL that we've created based on the type of submission. The method, again, is the method based on the type of submission. The data becomes what is in the form in the model which is here, yeah, so we've got ID, we've got title, we've got description, so on and so forth, completed. And we submit that to the back end, we submit that to the uh, Django uh, REST framework, I keep saying that wrong, the Django REST framework. On success, so forget error, so if there's an error, it's gonna print out a console log, right? But we don't want errors. So on success, what it does, it calls get data again. So makes the call. Then we call get data. So we get all of the, data, the new data from the back end. We delete everything that was on the screen and then we reapply, we re render that information using JavaScript. And then we hide the model. 
So no matter what, if it's a delete, if it's a update, or if it's a um, create, we hide the model afterwards and it shows the information. That is all we're doing. That is it. But you can, you know, there's quite a lot of code there to make it work, but it's all on one HTML document. Um, that was a lot easier to walk you through it than what it was to actually um, make it work. But if I was to now, we've already made migration. So if I go Python manage.py run server, will it work? Let's have a look. Well, something's happening. Oh, there we go. Uh, so um, I had to um, go onto a, a normal uh, Chrome browser because my uh, internet connection is really poor and it didn't want to load from the CDN, the bootstrap CSS I'm talking about. So that is the app looking exactly how it did at the start of this uh, section. So if we look at incomplete, there's nothing. If we look incomplete, if we add a task, we can put whatever the hell we want in there. Description, save, that should end up there. Great, actually what I'll do, what I will do, I'll break this and I'll show you that information in the back end just to you know, show you that it actually works. So Python manage.py create super user. Bobby There we go, run server. And if we now go to just forward slash admin, we should then be able to log in as me. And, oh, I haven't even registered the app. One second, hold the phone caller. We will just move that across as well. Save, oh yeah, so what we're doing, we're, we're registering the model to admin so that we can actually see it in the admin page. So uh, from dot models import YouTube schedule, we're creating a class. This allows us to st stipulate what uh, is seen on uh, the admin page. So we want ID title completed, then we register it. So admin dot site register and we register YouTube schedule and the new admin class that we've put there. That's what we're doing. Okay, so if I, uh, we're already got the server up and running, back in here, refresh. Happy days, YouTube schedules, um, and there you have it, okay? So if I go to localhost here, and if we go on incomplete, so if I go edit, change this to Django React, like I did at the start. So create Django React tutorial, save. If I go in here, there we have it, okay? So if we go edit and put completed, it will now be, oh, there we have it, it's incompleted. Go in here, completed. So it is, it's talking to the back end, it's creating um, an object in the database. We're able to update it, or oh, sorry, read it first. We're then able to update it and we're able to, if I click delete, we're able to delete it. There you have it. That is the working Django app. Thanks for watching and I look forward to going through the next part of this tutorial which is breaking this project down into just a back end, handling the APIs, it shouldn't take too long. And then we will be installing all the necessary stuff for React and building out the front end. So that's the end of this section. Thank you, bye. Hey everyone and welcome back to the second part of this Django React tutorial. In the last section we wrote a YouTube scheduler in Django. In this section and the next few sections we'll start to build out a single page application with Django handling the back end and the API and the front end will be handled entirely by React. So in this section it will be all about building the back end in Django. So what we need to do first is if you look at my screen here I've got a command prompt open. Uh, so what we need to do, we need to CD into the development directory. Mine is called development. And uh, in the last tutorial, uh, in the last section, so let's say, we created the Django React project. Okay, so that is in there. So come back. Uh, what we'll do is we will make DIR and we will call this Django React 2. So this is the second version, right? 
So, and this is where we differ. Normally we, we would now um, make virtual environment. We would install Django and we would start a project and that project will be the main directory and it'll be in the development directory. But we want to um, organize our directory in a slightly different way. So we want a directory for the back end and one for the front end to keep it completely separate. So what we'll do, we'll CD into the newly created directory called Django React 2. And now what we'll do is uh, make virtual ENV, we'll call it Django React 2, we'll keep it the same. It wouldn't hurt using the same virtual environment, it's just by having different virtual environments set out in their own kind of um, directories, uh, you can have certain libraries in one and not in the other. Um, and actually in this part of the tutorial, we will be using a slightly different um, requirements we will have different requirements for this is what we did in the last one that's what i'm trying to say so we've now got the virtual environment activated we know that with this little piece here it's saying that it's up and running so we will now go pip install django and then we'll have django rest framework i'll pause it whilst it's loading all of that Okay, that's worked well, but I did forget to install something else. So you can see here, it's installed a load of packages like it did in the last section, a Django REST framework and Django. This now allows us to start a project. But before we do this, pip, let's pip install one other thing. So pip install, and we need to bring in Django cause headers. There we go. And just for giggles, let's um, upgrade pip. I didn't in the last one, but I probably should do in this project. There we go, just copy and paste the command that comes up with in the a warning message there. So now we've got Django installed, the latest version of PIP, we've got Django REST framework and the Django cause headers once this is finished. We can now create a new project. So we can say Django admin start project and is it start new project? I think it's called. And we'll call this back end. Oh, it's not. It is start project. Sorry. Brain fart. There we have it. So we can CD into back end. So if I just open up the directory now, you can see how it's set up. So we're in Bobby Development Django React 2. We've now got a new project called Backend. And within that, we'll have the manage.py and we'll have the backend main directory. So that's where we are. I'll go back in the command prompt. Uh, we can now reference the manage.py file because we're in a backend directory. So uh, Python manage.py start app. And we'll call this the same as we did in the last section, which is SCHD. Okay, and no, that's it. That's all we'll do for this little part here. Uh, we'll open up Sublime Text. So if I go open folder, back and go into React, Django React 2. There we have it. I'll open that up and just drag it across. Sorry, this is just outside of screen, uh, but I'll get it in there now. Okay, so this is my. Um, Text editor, I use Sublime Text. You can see here I'm in React 2, Django React 2, and this is back end. So this is the project that we just started. And uh, the idea is in the next section, we'll create another uh, directory in here called front end, and that's what will be used to house all of React. So if we go into settings, what we need to do in installed apps, same as the last time, we want to put SCHD, and we want REST framework and then what we need to do we need to add in the cause headers so I'll stick that here I think it needs to go above so we'll put cause headers in there we then need some more middleware so now that we've installed cause headers we can reference that here in the middleware so it's cause headers dot middleware dot cause middleware there we have it and then right at the bottom of the page it doesn't necessarily need to go at the bottom what we do we need to add a little setting down here and I'll just take it from my project and this is for rest framework and this is for the authentication 
uh, when I was tinkering in my local environment, my development environment, it wouldn't let me do it until I added this. So REST framework, and it's a dictionary. We have default authentication classes, and this is where we have the REST framework.authentication.token authentication. So that is the settings.py file complete. Uh, so we'll rattle through this because I went through a lot of this in the last video. So a lot of the API, a lot of the REST framework stuff is exactly the same. So this is the urls.py file. Again, we're using the router, same view. Uh, admin doesn't change. The only difference is we don't need the path for um, the index page now because it'll all be done using the API. So we just don't need that in this. And then what we'll do in shed. So in here, we go into models. Again, it's exactly the same as it was in the last one. So if I just dump that in there. We won't talk through much of it. I've got timestamp and updated in this one. I think I had that in the last one. I can't remember now, but we had a, it's a, a title, the description and completed is what is important because we're um, serializing that using the REST framework. So in here, we need new file, save as, and we'll call this serializers.py. And we will take the serializer from my screen. I'm not explaining all of this as deep as I did in the last um, section of this video because you'll probably know most of it by now anyway. So again, this is the YouTube schedule serializer. It's the same API as the last section. We don't need the URLs in this. We will need the admin class added. I forgot to do this at the end of the last one. So we need to register that model. And then what we need is, where is it? views there we have it and we'll dump this in here so the views is bringing in view sets again the serializer and the model and we're creating this schedule view with the view sets and that is what again like the last section we're referencing here in the router so we're registering a router to router it's a um, regular expression with schedule and we've got views dot schedule view so that's how we're doing that there i believe that might be it don't think there's much else that we need to do. No, there isn't. Okay, so lastly, what we need to do is python manage.py make migrations. There we go. Python manage.py migrate. And python manage.py run server. Now this should just show us the Django basic page. So I open up, open up a browser and just go to localhost. Oh, sorry, let's go to, there we go. So because we've got Django REST framework uh, installed and the only URL that we've got registered in the uh, URL comp file is API. That's why I'm showing this here. And this allows us to then make a get request and you can also then create, read, um, update and delete using the API. So that is the back end done. We don't need to do any more of a deeper dive than that. Um, just to sort of cap it off. So in the first section, we built out the Django app in its entirety, back end and front end. So we were using Django to handle the back end, the API, and we were then rendering information to Django templates. So it took about 30 minutes to do that uh, because most of that time was spent creating the HTML file and the index file. Um, obviously, when we're just doing a back end using Django, it's a lot quicker when they're doing a lot less code. But in the next section, which will follow on from this, we will um, bring in and install all of the necessary libraries we need for, for React. And React will be using components and doing all of the heavy lifting to render the uh, information on the front end. And it will have all of the inbuilt CRUD functionality. So we'll be able to create um, a, a schedules for our YouTube, um, sorry, tasks for our YouTube schedule, we'll be able to read them, we'll be able to update them and delete them. And it'll all be sort of asynchronous, so nothing will be loading. It'll be a carbon copy of the one we built in section one. Okay, that's the end of this section. Thanks for watching. And in the next section, we'll start building out React. Bye-bye.
Hey everyone, welcome to the third part of this Django React tutorial. So in the last section, we'd finished our Django backend. There is actually one setting I forgot to go through in the last section, but I'll show you that in a second. In this section, we'll be actually installing NPM and creating a new React app and configuring everything on the front end so that by the end of this, we should have a working single page application that will allow us to create tasks for our YouTube schedule, read them, update them and delete them. So a carbon copy really, Oh, sorry, the output will be a carbon copy of what we finished in section one. The difference being in section one, we had a pure Django app. In this section, we'll have a Django and React app, which is fancy pants. So if you look at my screen here, um, this is where we got to in the last section, right? So we created a directory Django React 2 and we created a back end. This is our Django bits and pieces, right? So in this one, we want to create another directory called front end and that is where we'll be uh, installing all of the react bits and pieces so if we actually let's look in sublime text just to show you what i needed to do that i forgot to do i needed to add the cause origin whitelist so um, this will all be rendered so we'll be able to use this app using local host 8000 so we'll be running the server in the same way we do so it's um, python manage.py run server that will run the back end but we'll be using localhost 3000 to actually view um, the app itself. So that's what I added. I didn't go through that in the last section, but it is what we need to do. So add that to your settings.py file. Go back into your command prompt. What we want to do is CD back out of backend. We don't want to be in there now. Now that we're in Django React 2, we need to use uh, MPX create react app and then we'll call this front end now this will, will take a couple of seconds to get configured so i'm just going to pause it it's going to go through all of these configurations and get all of the directories set up in a way that will allow us to do something with it Okay, happy days. That took nearly uh, seven or eight minutes to complete. So when you do run that command, don't expect it to be uh, entirely uh, very, very quick. It's got a lot to do. It's got a lot of it, um, configuration. It's got a lot of installs. So um, that's why I paused the screen in the first place. So that is now there. If I open up my directory, we've got front end and we've got a whole bunch of bits and pieces in there, right? So it worked, or let's hope that it worked. Just, um, just make sure that it did. We want a CD into front end and then we can go npm start oh help if i put p there instead of o and if i now go into when that does kick in i should then be able to go into my directory sorry my my browser and go into localhost rather than 3000 we just whitelisted sorry 8000 we whitelisted 3000 right so I've just done that. It's just automatically opened it. As, as I've uh, run this in um, command prompt, it actually fired up a new browser and it opened it up for me anyway. So it's, it's working, right? So the fact that we've got the standard React page, that says to me that React is up and running and is all configured correctly. So that is fantastic. What we can do now is install the um, bootstrap packages that we had in the... Uh, the project that we built out in section one. So if you remember, we went to get bootstrap and we got the CSS and the JavaScript. Well, in the, as we're using React, we don't need to do that. All we can do is I'll go back into the command prompt. I just crash this out. Crash that out. And if I just paste the command, so it's npm install bootstrap and then it's React Strap, and you can probably just about see that it's uh, legacy peer uh, depths. So uh, that will install all of the bootstrap bits and pieces and enable us to actually view, or the it will make the front end look identical to what it did when we built it in Django earlier on. So let me pause the screen, and voila. Okay, that's all done. Again, that took like five minutes to get all configured, so uh, don't worry if it's going through a whole bunch of bits and pieces when you run that command, but it should eventually finish and you'll be all good to go. So now that we've got Bootstrap all installed, we now need to go into our text editor. So again, I'm using Sublime Text. And you can see here if we go into front end. If you go into, I had this uh, closed a second ago. If we go into SRC, 
and then go into index.js, we can now import Bootstrap. And you just want to put that underneath a React DOM. And that is import bootstrap slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap.css and then save. What we can now do is we can um, start building out one of the components. So if you remember in section one, uh, one of the key parts of the app was when you trigger create task or edit, it pops up with a model. Okay, so this will be a component. So we need to go about uh, creating that component. But like always, what I'll do, I'll, I'll take all of my code from my screen and I'll dump it in the page and we'll talk through it a little bit. So let's go in here and we will CD into um, SRC, make DIR, and we'll call this components. Components, have I spelled that correctly? Yeah, I have. And in there, we will want a uh, file called model.js so there we go new file now we'll just do this we'll do it in a text editor components new file save as we'll call it model.js okay and then in that file I will just pick up my code from my other screen copy and we will dump it all in there Okay, so import React component, right, from React. That's pretty standard stuff. And we're importing button, model, model header. This is all bootstrap stuff, okay? So we're bringing that in from React Strap. So that's React's library for bootstrap. And then in here, we have got, this is where we've got all of the uh, constructor bits and pieces. So, yeah, we've got the constructor with props. Then we've got the handle change. Okay, so um, let me see if that, okay, we've got the return here. Let me talk through that first. So like in the first section, we uh, coded this out in pure HTML elements because we're using React, we, um, we write it slightly different, but this is essentially the same thing. So this model will be identical to the HTML elements that we were looking at prior to this. So we've got model is open equals true. Then we've got toggle equals toggle. And we've got a model header. So this is schedule item. Okay, so that is no different to what we had in section one. Then we've got the form body, sorry, a model body with a form. So this is the um, React form equivalent to the form that we've got for Django. So remember we were using jQuery to submit the um, form element to the Django backend. This is the form element for React. So we've got the input. We don't need, because we're just doing this slightly different, we don't need the action, we don't need the ID. So that's the beauty of using React as a front end. So it's all kind of built in credit anyway. So we don't need to mess around with the ID. So it's, it just identifies the um, object and then you can edit it based on just this code that we've got here. So we've got an input. So this would just be the title. So remember we had the ID and we had the action in the previous section. Now we've just got title. We've then got the other form group, which is a description, and then we've got a toggle. So we've got a, um, a checkbox, should I say. So on change, then it's this dot handle change, and then completed. So we'll look at the handle change in a second. Uh, then we've got the model footer. So this is the button. So where we had a, an on-click event handler on the button before, it would submit the form, yes, but it also had an ID and allowed us to handle a different uh, action whether it be update or delete in section one this is slightly different in react so we've got the color of success was a green button on click on save this state action item active item and that's it that is the model but if we look at the handle change so this is what's being called further down here uh, so yeah on change this handle change so we've got let name value equals e target and then if e target type equals checkbox then um, it does the e E dot target checked. Okay, so that's it will be a checked checkbox or unchecked checkbox. Okay, this state active item. And then we've got a constructor there. Right, okay, so that is the model. We can then go about adding some code to app.js. So this is standard. This is what uh, is being rendered here. So this is what we're looking at. When we're looking at app.js, this is all that we're looking at from the code in the sublime text here. Okay, so learn React, and you've got the logo there. So we need to change that because we need to, um, we want to see the little form that says add task, edit, delete, right? So if I go on my other screen, 
Okay, if I now just dump that there, great. So this is all the code we're going to need. So at the top here, we've got a few imports. So we're bringing in the model that we just created. At the top here, we've got React, which is what you'd normally see. And then import AXIOS from AXIOS. So we've then got the component and the constructor, which uh, is pretty standard stuff. And then we've got component, component did mount. This refresh list, and then we've got the refresh list here. So this is a this is where we're calling the uh, the get request for the API schedule, and then we've got the toggle. So this is for the model. So opening and closing the model. We've got a handle submit. So when we submit the form, we're then doing if item dot id. So this is where we haven't got the id or the action. Um, so if we've got an ID, then we're doing a put request. So remember in section one, I was using just an if statement to work out whether it's an update, a delete, or a post. And I was changing the method accordingly. The dot put, um, and this is called here. So the API schedule, and then it's the ID. That becomes the put request, and then we refresh the list. Okay, and then we return. The post request is if it's just a new task, and then we refresh the list. So let me just... No, there we go. We got the handle delete. So it's a dot delete. Again, that's the method that we're calling. So it's API schedule item ID. So no different to Django. It's just coded slightly different. But we're essentially doing exactly the same thing. So we're making a put, a post, or a delete request to the API that we've done in the Django backend. Okay, so we've got a create item method here. We've got an edit item. And we've got display completed. Okay, so these are all methods that we need to make this uh, work in the same way as we did in Django. Then we've got render tab list. So this is all HTML, right? So we're returning a div with the class name nav nav tabs. They, if you remember, are all bootstrap, uh, bootstrap classes. So we're doing exactly the same here. We're just going about it in a slightly different way. So this is um, the equivalent in React is what we did in section one. So um, we've got a completed here. So these are the, na the nav tabs. Remember, we've got completed and incomplete. So on click, and we're making a call there to display completed false. Class name, this state, view completed, nav link. So um, if this is active, then we're looking at the incomplete list. And if this is active, then we're looking at the completed list. And then we've got render items. So we look down here. We have got... This is the, um, essentially, this is the um, tab content. So whether it be completed or incomplete. So again, we're, we're all, always using bootstrap type classes, right? It's just we need it in this uh, format for React so we can render it in the right way. Uh, and these are the edit and delete buttons here. Okay, so that's where, we're, when we're looking at, at, at a task on our schedule, that is what we're looking at. So it's the name of the title, the title of the task, followed by edit and delete. And then it, each of them have got an on-click handler. So on-click this handle delete, on-click this edit item, and that will pop up with the model. Okay, and then lastly, we've got render return. So this is returning the HTML that you actually see. So this is what's got the, um, the button that, allows us to add task and then it renders the tab the nav lit items so the um, complete and incomplete and also the tab list as well which will be the list of tasks that are incompleted and incomplete now providing you've saved everything we should be cooking on gas here just have a little double check we've created a model.js so this will be the model that pops up with the um, asking you to add a title a description and a complete toggle checkbox we've changed index.js we're now importing bootstrap and we've also added our code to app.js so we're creating all of the handlers okay so we've got the um, refresh list we've got toggle we've got handle submit handle delete yeah so these are all our handlers we should be good to go. So let's open up a, um, a new command prompt. Because what we need to do, we need to fire up Django, right? So good. Django needs to be, the server needs to be running on Django for us to actually be able to access the back end, right? So let's go CD development CD. And this is Django React 2. Okay, work on Django React 2. That'll fire up the virtual environment. And then we should be able to go Python manage.py run server. 
uh, what have we done here? So Python managed, oh no, sorry, we need the CD to backend. And then we'll go Python managed.py, run server. Actually, what we'll do, we will break that and we will go Python managed.py create super user. And we'll create one called Bobby with my password. And then we will fire up the service. That way I can access the admin page and I can view the uh, objects and make sure that we are actually creating them and updating them. So that's fired up. The server is now fired up, right? So that's in that command prompt. Oh, I've forgotten to do something here. What I need to do, I, we actually need to install AXIOS. We, re we um, referenced this in app.js. But we, what we need to do is actually bring it in here. So um, we need to install AXIOS. And we then need, once that's finished, which will take a second or two, we need to then add a proxy setting into our package.json file. So I'll just pause it and we'll come back to it. Okay, that's all done. I've go back in the text editor and we need to now go into our package.json file, which is here and just underneath uh, private true, we just need to add proxy. We need to add the proxy localhost 8000, which is the server that we're running on the back end. So we'll save that. We'll go back into our, right, that's already running. So 8000 is still running there. And we'll go in here and we should now just be able to put in here npm start. And let that go about its business. That should now open up a browser on localhost 3000 with any luck. Let's have a look. It might open up on my other screen, so just hold on a second, it is, it is typical. Let's have a look, see if this is gonna work. Ah, lovely, okay, so let me close that down, right. So that's the back end, so localhost host 8000 API, and that is running. What I'll also open up is localhost 8000 forward slash admin and I will open up Bobby there we go and you can see we shouldn't have anything in there we haven't okay this is a react app so moment of truth let's see if this works so you can see incomplete and incomplete what nothing so there's nothing in the database right so if I add something so this is a test um, task Oh, the gobbledygook, click save. Is that working? Probably not. Oh, it is, there we go. So just refreshed and it's in there. Right, so that works for incomplete. So let's add a task using the front end and then go Django React and then we'll have create Django React tutorial, click save. That works. That's now dumping that in incomplete, right? So if we open up back end, refresh, that's working. Brilliant. We now uh, delete the first one. That's working. So we're able to create, we're able to um, edit. Oh no, we haven't checked it. We're able to delete. So let's see if we can edit. So let's go into Django React, edit, click complete, save. Is it incomplete? Happy days, it works. Okay, and it is a carbon copy of what we made in Django. So in section one, it looked identical to this. We were able to asynchronously create, read, update, delete tasks to our YouTube schedule. We've now also then built a back end in Django and a front end in Reacto. And we're, Reacto. <laughs> we've also then built a back end in Django and a front end in React. And we're able to do exactly the same thing. The beauty of this is that we've got a back end that we can now manage using a back end developer, for instance, in a production um, app or project. project. And then we can have, we've got a front end built in React that can be managed by React developers specifically that work in unison with one another. So there's a lot of benefits to having a single page application. It makes for a lot more robust application in a production environment. And yeah, it's a very modern way of creating these apps. So 
that is the end of this section. Actually, I did say at the start that we'll be doing four sections that, that would include testing. Well, we've just tested the app. We already tested the first app as well. They both work fantastically. So um, let's call it a day on this tutorial. I hope you've found it interesting. Um, I do have a habit. I do normally just dump my code and walk you through it rather than trying to do a code along. You can appreciate, although this is a small app, to create this and code it from scratch would take a lot of time. So by dumping the code in and talking you through, I hope you get a better understanding of what we're trying to achieve. And the code is going to be made available on GitHub. And that will be a link in the description below. So before I close this off, if this is the first time that you have come across Dig Coding, then please subscribe and click that bell so you're notified every time I add a video. And also if you want to support us, uh, and help us create content of a higher quality and at a fire, faster pace, then there's a link to my Patreon page in the description below, along with my HBAR wallet. Thank you very much for watching this. I've enjoyed making it. I hope it's been useful. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.